Right, okay, so here is my book, which is presumably back to front on your screens. And this is from ARC, Humanities Press, and it's another mini book in the Past Imperfect series published by ARC Humanities Press, which presents a concise, critical inter um, overviews of the latest research by scholars and it covers a full range of fields in the medieval period from around 400 to about 1500, which in a European context is known as the Middle Ages. So the plan with this series is to summarize the debates which are, are within a certain topic. And I was asked to write about the Templars because I've spent a good deal of my research career studying them. Now the Templars are best known as a military religious order, which was founded in the wake of the First Crusade to defend pilgrims coming from Europe to the Christian holy places in the Middle East. Some of them were also Muslim and Jewish holy places. And as far as we can ascertain for at least some of these, the Templars were happy to work alongside the Muslims and the Jews when pilgrims were on their way to these sites. So, for example, Jerusalem was supposed to be barred to everyone except Christians, but there were Muslims and Jews there too despite what the authorities might have said. The other thing that the Templars are best known for, apart from their military activity, is their dissolution through the machinations of the King of France in the early 14th century, and contemporaries said, and most modern scholars agree, that this is because the King of France wanted their money. However, my favourite page that I've given you, which is from chapter five on impact was not about military affairs or about the trial, but it was about the Order Brothers activities within Western Europe, which were the areas where they'd been given property so they could raise funds to support their work on the frontiers of Christendom. But not all the money actually went to that. If you look at the page, you'll see that by the time of the arrests of the Templars in the early 14th centuries, they were spending a considerable amount of time and money providing post-mortem care for their patrons. They would provide a very fine tune and they would support priests who performed mass for the souls of their patrons. And quite a large number of the chapels which um, housed these priests weren't actually Templar chapels. Their primary purpose was to commemorate the Templars' benefactors and provide this poor post-mortem care for their souls. So how do you care for your loved ones after their death? How do you make the best chance of they, your loved ones making their way through purgatory to heaven, make a donation to the Templars and they will see that they'll be all right. The Templars were also popular providers of pastoral care. Now, they were part of the church reform movement in Europe in the early 12th century and in their active protection of Christians. Local bishops in the Western Europe seem to have thought that these were the people to give parishes to, give parish churches to, to ensure that they were properly administered. And also the popes had allowed the brothers exemptions from observing interdicts, which meant that when other churches had to close, the Templars could carry on providing mass and the other sacraments. During the trial of the Templars in England, some non-Templar witnesses stated that the Templars would take excommunications off their own people, their employees and their associate members, and possibly even their tenants. In fact, their privileges only allowed them to lift excommunications from their own brothers, but hey. And also many of their chapels became parish churches. Again, they were not supposed to do this. Their chapels were supposed to be for the brothers only, but many of the new religious orders of the 12th century found that they were given land in areas where there were no parish churches, therefore there was a need for a parish church. So they provided that aid for the locality. And the locals were quite happy to fall in with this. Very often it was the locals who seemed to have decided we don't have a parish church here, so we will go to the local religious house, in this case, the Templars. And then the Templars will be appointing priests to these parish churches. They didn't have very many priest brothers of their own, so they would be hiring priests from the location. There's, I mentioned at the bottom there that there are a number of healing miracles associated with the Templars. And on the next page, I also talk about Templar sisters, but that's as far as the page goes. 
So I will stop there and pass on to the next person on the list.